for you to really connect. Mm. Yeah. Expository, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no worries. I will try my best to pronounce. No, it's okay, don't worry. Let's do that. And the, yeah. uh, <laughs> okay, hi parents. Uh, this is Coach John here from Learning Out of the Box. Uh, thank you so much for being here. And today I have a GP teacher who's going to share with us how to build a firm foundation for expository essays and general paper. Hello, Joey. Hello. Hi, John. Hi, parents. I'm Joey here. Hi, Joey. Thanks for being here. And I know that it's a lunchtime. <laughs> Well, okay, yeah, so my uh, lunch date for today. Sorry again. Yeah, my lunch date for today. Really? Oh. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, and, and parents, thanks for being here. And I know that some, some of you may uh, be online here during your lunch time. Yeah, so it's very rushed for you. And parents, as you can see, because today I'm going to interview a GP teacher. So you can see that I'm more <laughs> conscious with my English. Yeah, so please pardon me if I sound not natural. <laughs> Okay, so uh, Joey, uh, could you share with us uh, your 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 backstory? How you um, how you end up doing what you're doing today? And I can see that from your description of your profile, um, you used to be a corporate lawyer, as yes. well as a ex Hua Zhong JC GP teacher, with over sixteen years of GP teaching experience. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> Time passes by very fast when you're having a lot of fun. Yeah. So hi parents, just uh, a little bit of information about myself just to share. I went to law school back then um, and I thought that being a lawyer was quite an amazing, interesting job, you know, after we watch all the movies and TV series. So I practiced for a couple of years and it was fairly interesting. I think as some of you are in the corporate world, you also know that it is very challenging in many different ways. Uh, but at one point, I was also asking myself if I didn't stay on in the corporate sector, would I be interested in something else? I think as young people, we are constantly asking what are the pathways that we have for us. So I decided to take, I decided to take one year um, to explore whether teaching is something that I want to venture into, even though that teaching may not seem as equally prestigious as law. But when I tried teaching, I was very, I found it tremendously rewarding, even though the pay cut was tremendous. Uh, but then I realized that my strength was really working with young people and to see them level up in terms of the skills and to see them being excited about what they are learning. Uh, I think that brought a lot of joy to me. And then ever since then, I stayed on as a teacher and I've just left Hua Chong. So I've been there for many years teaching general paper. So it's a really nice school with amazing opportunities for students. Yeah, that I will tell you, yes. Great, great. Yeah, and, and the purpose of, of, of today is actually to share with us like how, how to do well for, for GP. And before we went on live, we were discussing, uh, though our Facebook group uh, has parents with primary school growing kids, uh, but first, Personally, I feel that doing well in GP um, starts off all the way from, from a primary school. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think um, the reason why I'm sharing I, that, the, and the reason why I brought Joey up here is because uh, when I was in JC, okay, I didn't do very well, uh, even though my GP teacher really believed I can do well. Yeah. And she stayed back every day, almost every day to mark my GP essay. Wow. Yeah. But I did a D7. <sighs> okay. Yeah, so so I think everything starts out from young. So, so uh, Joe, we can can you share with us like how how we parents can prepare our children way ahead, even though it's like maybe six years time or even 10, 10 years time for them to start to be exposed to GP. Yes. Okay. So uh, today, I think I'll be addressing parents who have children in primary school, as well as maybe even children in secondary schools. So at GP, a lot of uh, teenagers will tell you is tremendously daunting, because there isn't a fixed syllabus. So just to give you a brief outline, so it's a subject that they take at the A levels. And there will be an essay that will take 50% of the grades and then the comprehension, which will take 50% of the other grades. So at the A-levels, there is no oral and no listening compre. So it's just two pieces of written paper. And it is very daunting because the topics uh, can be very random. 
So it ranges from politics to social issues uh, like discrimination, poverty, also to other issues like history and war, and also to other abstract issues, let's say the value of honesty, uh, sportsmanship. Okay, so in, 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 sorry, so actually recently, um, the papers have also become somewhat harder for students now. So I just want to tell parents that a lot of times I noticed when they come to me in J1, mm -hmm. um, they will be always asking teacher, is there a model essay I can memorize? Yep. And I always tell them, it's not about memorizing, it's about having your own views. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the scariest thing for them because for so many subjects that they have for chemistry, for mathematics, for physics, for econs, there is always a model answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think the best way we can prepare students from young is to encourage them to think freely and to give them the space to question. Because mm -hmm. I think maybe in primary and secondary school when they write essays, it's very imaginative, you know, so they read a lot of fiction, a lot of fantasy stories they can write beautifully, you know, the storylines are just so impressive. But when these students transit into JC and then they have to write expository essays on concrete issues, like for instance, gender discrimination, they are stuck because they realize that I, I know, I vaguely know something about it, but I don't have my own opinion. Mm. And this is where it becomes, they, they feel as though like they don't know how to go on. Yeah, so I think as much as we want to encourage them, at, especially at secondary school level, to write beautifully for their narrative essays, you know, but we want to also open them to think about the issues and more importantly, how they feel and where they stand. Yeah, so at this moment, I'm just going to share some of the resources that I usually share with my parents, those, because uh, at Hua Chong, we meet the parents every year. So I usually share all these resources with my parents. So I'm just going to share the screen. If any um, any parts you want me to explain a little bit further, uh, John, please just step in. And... Okay, so I'm just going to, parents, I'm going to share screen now. Okay, so while, while, while you're mm -hmm. trying to get it up, uh, parents, uh, thanks for, thanks again for, for being here. And this is a free Facebook live so that, um, and the reason why I do it is because we want to support parents who teach their kids. Yeah. So if you if you are here, uh, do like the post to show us that you are here, or you can drop a comment with any question that you have. Because um, though G, GP is only offered in JC1 and JC2, but I believe that everything starts from home, and we being the parents uh, who teach our kids can really make a big in, impact uh, by yes. exposing our children to uh, different things at the early age. It definitely, John is very right. Okay, so I have uh, actually I tell parents that it is a uh, for teenagers who are taking GP. The if parental support is there, it will be so much easier for them because they often find that the struggle is very real. Okay, so uh, just to quick, uh, just a quick one. So I just want to introduce the parents today. So these are the popular GP topics that I think some parents, because you know you depending on the, the nature of the jobs that you do or the friends that you interact with or your social circle, you would definitely have come across some of these issues. Okay, so like for instance, number one will be fake news and consequences. Okay, mm -hmm. so we also, uh, second will be social media. So I'm not going to go through everything, but parents, I think you can have a very good sense that the coverage for GP is really very very wide, very broad. So if you travel frequently, let's say to certain countries, you can actually talk to you know, bring back a newspaper from that. Okay, now COVID, you can travel. But for parents who travel, they can bring back newspapers from other countries and say, hey, this is the headlines in, for instance, uh, Ho Chi Minh City, you know, what do you think it says, you know? So that's quite interesting for children to learn also. Okay, some of the issues are quite uh, new, such as artificial intelligence, uh, facial recognition software. So if parents are in the tech industry, you know, can share with them what are the latest changes and also more importantly, the consequences of the changes. Yeah, so we are concerned right now that with the increase in terms of the technology, are we sacrificing our privacy? <laughs> you know, are our human rights being affected in some way or another? Okay, so of course, politics will take a big part of GP. So we are still anxiously waiting, will it be a Trump or Biden season? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so actually parents can use this time to discuss with their children, why is it that a leader like Trump, whom some were deride as really very silly, you know, but he can be so popular. Mm. You, you know what I'm saying? Because right? I have children as well. And they say, mom, you know, he is so he, he's talking nonsense. Why do Americans vote for somebody who talks nonsense? Mm. And I say, but the charisma is there. 
you know, and I talk to them about politicians and how politicians have to play up their popularity, right? And I think that he is very skilled at manipulating, for instance, uh, how people view about their status as Americans mm -hmm. and their insecurities in this world, right? Yeah, so actually, if the politician is a very skilled manipulator of uh, psychology or human behavior, mm -hmm. I think half the battle is already there for him. Then the other half, he has to convince other people. So, I mean, these are things that we can talk to our children in a very safe space. And when they have questions about the news, we must be comfortable and talking to them and not judging them. So, you know, what I mean by not judging them is just recently, I'm just going to uh, share a little anecdote. Uh, just two days ago, my teenage boy asked me, um, what's wrong with abortion? Just out of the blue, we were just walking for lunch. There was no <laughs> prior notice that he was going to talk to me about this. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's, it's like, I don't understand why people are so upset about abortion. I mean, you know, so then I just explained uh -huh. to him, ah, that, okay, there are two camps, you know, one is a pro-choice, one is a pro-life. And then I asked him, why do you think people really think that it is so important for a woman to have the right to abortion? decide for herself and why they think other people feel that it is wrong to take a life you know so so uh, as we were walking to our lunch place we just talk and talk and I I didn't I didn't come down and firmly at him and say oh, yeah I don't want don't talk about this immoral issue like, you know why are you thinking about this you're just a teenager mm. so, I didn't do that mm. yeah. And then at the end of it, I was like, oh, mommy, now I understand. Okay, so the pro-life people think of this way, the pro-choice people think of this way. And then I said, yeah, and I said, in time to come, you will have to find your own position when people ask you which side of the debate do you fall on. Yeah, yeah. then he was like, okay. Yeah, so actually I realized that children, they are, they are learning about current affairs in so many ways of their own, and sometimes they don't know how to process their thoughts. Mm. And their parents, if we can give them that little space to ask a question, and to provide some explanation, some context, I think that is a great start. We don't mm. always have to decide for them at the end of it all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I uh, also want to ask a, a, a question as a parent. Yeah. Because uh, when I was taking GP in JCY and my mom also tried her best and she said, okay, all you need to do is you must read newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> but ended up, I actually sub subscribed to it and there were piles and piles of newspapers un yes. untouched. Yeah, so so even uh right now if I if my kid is getting GP right now and I'm someone who don't read um newspaper, so how 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 can we as as parents really um engage our children in this kind of conversation which requires a lot of in-depth knowledge? Okay, so actually a uh, good one about newspapers, right? I think uh, a lot of parents also shared that they, the children don't touch newspapers at home. Okay, the good news actually for now for JC students is that uh, MOE has a tie up with SPH. So mm -hmm. J1 and J2 students get free subscription to Straits Times. Oh, really? Online? Yes. online? Even all, all the premium articles, yes, all the online. Yeah, all the premium articles. So what I do is I encourage my students to not just read the premium articles for these two years, but also the last two years, you know, because uh, you can have, yes, okay. So I think in terms of the Straits Times parents, if your child is in a, in a, a JC, you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, because I think it's, it's a great deal for them. Yeah, but about parents, let's say who don't read, sometimes I tell parents is even if you don't read, but you have your own pers perspectives. Okay, I think it's good to share your own values and your perspectives because we grew up in a different era from them because mm -hmm. a lot of them now, they are so in in technology and social media that sometimes you ask them to think about you know poor people then they were like yeah I see poor people on my internet but they have never encountered what poverty looks like mm -hmm. yeah and, you know so I actually if parents can share some of their um, encounters with some of the real world issues I think their perspectives that would be very valuable especially parents who let's say they travel a lot for work and they know what poverty looks like in third world country then it's very real okay yeah, so I think now you tell children, like, I think a lot of Singaporeans parents tell children, be grateful for what you have, we give you so much, you have holiday, you got your iPad, you got this, some children out there don't have anything. Mm -hmm. so my, my students always think that the children out there are like some fictitious people, who are these children out there who don't have anything, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, so if you can share with them, so about children begging by the roadside, how in some cases they are actually criminals to the kids that are in charge of these children beggars, right? And what happens to them? Yeah, so I think those will be real. Yeah, so um, for parents, if you are not interested, if you don't have time or really not interested <laughs> in reading, okay, it's a very real thing okay, because reading takes up time. I actually get a lot of parents to do hands-on activity with their children in a very fun way. So let me just introduce you to one or two. Okay, the first one is go eat. 
Okay, so you can see here that, uh, yeah, bring your child to eat, okay, and eat what? Because Singaporeans, we just love so much food, right? Eat the Impossible Burger, okay, yeah, and it is, I don't know whether you have heard about it, uh, it when it first came, introduced to Singapore, it was really expensive, and it was only available in certain high-end restaurants, but now, uh, just last two weeks, uh, NTUC is selling it, yeah, so you can actually buy it and cook it at home with your children like hey you know should we do something interesting uh, and what is so interesting about the impossible burger is it's all together plant made from plants so it's vegetarian but it looks like burger it tastes like burger and it smells like burger yeah mm -hmm. it's like just mind-boggling how can it be okay so for parents if you really enjoy watching youtube videos there are a lot of things that i encourage parents to just watch together and these are very short snippets like three minutes okay so i'm just going to show you a couple of seconds okay and my, yeah so my students enjoy this video brown is a neuroscientist at impossible foods the hamburger will send all sorts of information to our sensory organs to our ears nose to our eyes and tongue it's only when those sense organs send information to the brain and they get integrated that we can ever become aware of the fact that we're experiencing a hamburger the goal is to create that same sensory experience, so the brain can't tell the difference. Which takes us back to this question. What makes meat meat? To answer that, scientists here are literally breaking down a beef patty molecule by molecule. And there are trillions of them. This machine isolates every single aroma molecule in a burger. Flavor scientists sit here, sniff, and then jot down what they smell. Floral, rose, apricot, foot, cheesy, macaroni and cheese, old people, crackers, some rotting garbage, something they don't want. But at the right combination, that gives you the experience and signal signal to your brain to say, yes, I'm eating meat and mm, this is tasty. Okay, so I'm just going to pause here so you can see oh, that. Um, what about, because I saw the part that they, they, they posted foods and old people and how are these related to the meat? Oh, this is the smell. The smell of the food. Yeah, the smell of the burger. Yeah, so when people eat, right, they actually smell a, a combination of these. It's so bizarre, right? How they smell food and old people. <laughs> yeah, okay. So so actually, the whole idea of the Impossible Burger is to trick your brain into thinking that you're eating the original when it is an uh... artificial version, you see. And so plant-based food is now the norm because it is touted to be environmentally friendly uh, and also a healthier lifestyle. Okay, so I think these are things that you know, even parents can decide for themselves, is, is this suitable for me? Do I like it? You know, and also for interesting, okay, because this originated from the US, right? So uh, would Asians take to it? Yeah, okay. So I think this is something that we can consider. Uh, so I actually enjoy if parents can chip in these activities because it's, it's not possible for me to cook for all my students and bring the burger to class. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay. So this one, um, the second one is also uh, have discussion teenagers about how to protect themselves. I think in this day and age, especially not just for boys, not uh, sorry, not just for girls, I think mm. boys and girls need to know uh, that uh, with all the hidden cameras and all, how they can, yeah, you know, stand up for themselves. And I think it also can use Monica Bay and also question, you know, was she very brave or do you think she was very silly in doing this? You know, it's like some people say that she, you know, she is a freedom fighter and because of her, this whole issue has come into the limelight and as a country, we are all aware of it. But can you imagine how much risk she was taking at the early stages? Would anyone believe her? Would her parents even support her? Would her friends be there for her? So I think that for young people in this world, they are very intimidated in stepping up because something could feel really badly and their reputation could be tarnished for the rest of their lives. Mm. So I think... Uh, now that we have this real life case in Singapore, it's actually good for parents to talk to their children, okay? And also asking to what extent should our rights be protected when technology can be so invasive? Mm. Yeah, okay, so I think more thinking questions. Okay, for younger children, mm -hmm. movies, I, I okay? A question here. Sure. Yeah, okay, because I, I mean, I, I, I personally have worked with friends and some, Sometimes, depending on the topic uh, that is being brought up to discuss, some parents may not feel com comfortable saying that. Mm. Yeah, so what are some of, the, some of your suggestions or advice for parents? Like, for example, for topic number two, this one that we are looking at right now, some, some parents may have their own views and they just don't mm. want to talk about 
kid and just wash it away and it happens. So you're saying that some parents, they don't want to talk about it, is it? So yes. they just sweep it under the carpet, is it? Correct, correct. So that's uh, okay. Like yeah, actually, so I can also understand that in a lot of Asian families, you know, we, we try to avoid issues that makes us feel uncomfortable. Okay, no. yeah, I, I, I agree. But I would like to share with you that your children are growing up in a totally different world, that their entire self is projected onto the internet because of social media. Mm. Okay, so if, if, we do not, if we do not get out of our comfort zone, it's going to be the, the gap between your, you and your child will get greater as he becomes a teenager. Yeah, so I tell parents that from a very young age, if you can, uh, understand what goes on in social media in your child's life and how he or she is um, is, is she or he or she thriving, you know, in the term, in terms of social media? Yeah. And yeah, because so many of, I, I mean, I've also counseled many students, their self-esteem are very badly affected by what happens on social media. And that also affects their performance at work in school. Yeah, so we may not have to start off with very uh, controversial topics like Monica Bay, but other softer, gentle issues because I think the parent-child relationship is something that takes constant work. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so maybe you can start off with some other issues here, maybe more like hearted ones. Yeah. Okay, so like watching movies, okay. Uh, yeah. So now we can go to the theater. Okay, so this was uh, back then the Avengers and some parents were like, yeah, yeah, I brought my kids to watch Avengers. But then after a movie, you just like eat a popcorn and walk away, right? And you have a good laugh. But actually they have very strong themes that we can talk to our children. So uh, it's done was, his portrait as a villain, but could he have been a hero in a different way? You know, because he wanted to save the world from overpopulation, which would ensure its demise. But if you get rid of half of the population, the world can rejuvenate and be sustainable. You know, so, so something to consider, but um, maybe this is a bit too old. The latest one will be Mulan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially uh, the children will love this. Okay, so I think some of the very interesting issues we can talk about will be gender roles. Okay, so uh, women, is, they are seen to be taking, playing the back seat role, whereas the men will just, whoa, you're the testosterone and go and fight and stuff. Mm. Yeah, but is bravery and courage solely seen as masculine traits or is it seen as a universal trait? Okay, so I think this is something to consider. Then beauty also. Um, because back then, because um, 5,000 years ago in China, to be considered beautiful was uh, to have very small feet. Yeah, so we can actually ask our students, you know, like, do you think Mulan is beautiful? Or do you think people who must be external, you know, have the external beauty, then they are considered beautiful? Yeah, so, and uh, also asking ourselves today, you know, because especially those of us like Coach John who has daughters, I also think that girls today face a lot more pressures when it comes to their looks. Mm. So you hear all the stories of teenagers having dieting issues or, you know, they are going on different fats and because they want to have the tie gap, you know, all the, you know, all the many things that, that trend on Instagram and all. So what are our explicit and implicit expectations of women? And as parents, if we can use all these opportunities to affirm them, I think that that's, that's great. So we don't just watch a movie and say, oh, that's great. Shall we go and do something else? But you tell your children, you know, especially your daughters, you are, you are your own person in your own mm. right. You know, so there's no need for them to live up to any unrealistic expectations. Yes. Yeah. So any questions at this moment? Any question? Actually, I'm trying to read the... Because it's, it's something of, of interest to me. Yeah. Because and 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 you ask for on because I have three girls, so I know that there's going to be a lot of challenges yes. um for for me to, to raise them up from kids to teenagers. Yes. Yeah, and sometimes also uh girls in particular teenage girls, they can go through very volatile emotions. And a lot of it is de depends on their self-esteem, how how good they feel about themselves, you know. Yeah. And their looks sometimes. So I think in this day and age, the relationship between their looks and their self-esteem is, is so intertwined. I think where else back in our time is that I think if you are quite ugly, you can still be happy. <laughs> but now yeah, there's a very strong pressure for teenagers to really look so cool, look so hip, look so, you know, in the with the crowd and to be looked up to by their peers. Yeah. Okay, so uh, something like this. Uh, then uh, 
yeah, so there are a lot of things that we can do online with our children as well. We can together, as parents and children, take a quiz on spotting fake news and haha, see who wins. You know, mm. sometimes kids may get competitive. Then they go, you see, parent, mom, I did better than you at this. Then I'm like, oh dear. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Then after that, you know, it's like, you know, we can do this. Like, sometimes I see parents are like, waiting at, you know, when they order food at the restaurant and everybody's holding out their gadget, but they're doing different things. Mm. But maybe it's like, hey, you know, let's do a three minutes quiz on fake news and see who can spot all the fake news. Okay. Yeah, so this is quite interesting, uh, spotting fake news. And no, then the, from the quiz, where, 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 where do you get this quiz? Is something uh, I, you... Yeah, this one I got from, uh, uh, I can't remember which website there, but there are quite a lot of these fake news. Um, Quizzes that you can just pick up. Uh, so let me check. And so I took it. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Can so parents also. I think sometimes you want to watch videos. I think our children they love YouTube videos. I totally. Uh, I can understand the lure of it. I think China News Asia Insider will be a great place if we you know we don't want to read the news with them. They just watch uh like a three minute video, and we can just talk because part of GP we we definitely will ask them about Singapore issues. Okay, so I have so many students who say, Mrs. Tan, you know, I, I've been in Singapore, but, you know, I, I don't really know much about other, like, discrimination in Singapore, or, you know, I don't really know much about the government policies regarding environmental issues. So this kind of, so this whole resource is fantastic. Because I think China News Asia has done a brilliant job in terms of their research and in terms of the way they, they portray and they angle uh, the perspectives. Okay. Yeah, I think right now uh it would be good for, for, for me to help to help the parents to, to summarize a bit because I think it's something very new for them. Yeah, mm. and something that I think the parents can to start off start off at home right now, even though your kids are in primary school. Yeah, so uh Joey has shared that uh for the GP students, they have the free access to uh straight times on online, right? And yes. even the, in the and even the premium articles. Yeah. Yes. Um, if your child is not in JSC yet, you can subscribe to Shrink Times if you want. Uh, the other thing is uh, you can check on uh, you, you, YouTube and Google Channel News Asia Insider or CNA in, in, uh, Insider to short clips. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Or you can also uh, go to Google and then check out those um, sites that really differentiate fake news and real news. Mm and pick a fun quiz for kids and see who knows more. Mm. Yeah. Okay, thanks John for the great summary. Yeah, so uh, this one will be very useful, definitely. And even now, JC students, they find that this is one of their best places to go to for Singapore news. So um, sometimes interesting ones will be uh, interesting articles that I come across will be, for instance, this one about uh, migrants who actually learned Mandarin and to understand mm -hmm. the Singapore culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and and why is it that our diverse not it's not just multiracial multi religious but we have so many people from different nationalities, okay. So how has it strengthened our identity as Singaporeans? So I think this will be another issue that we can talk to our students. Oh, sorry, our children. <laughs> but uh, if the the reason why I also like Channel News Asia is because they tend to also not just have the news but they also have snippets of the videos. Okay, so it's very very interesting for children to watch and understand. So let's just hear a little bit. Yeah, so I'm just going to pause here. So as you can see that, you know, this even this one, children can understand and go like, oh, you know, he speaks Chinese, so cool, you know, and then it's, yeah, and then we ask them, what's it like, you know, to be in a foreign country on your own? How will you fit in? How do you understand people's cultures? And how do you make friends, right? Because I think there's also a good chance when we prepare, let's say for myself, when I prepare my students for the exams, I want to prepare them for life. Because I will tell them, honestly, half of you in this class will eventually work overseas. Mm. and you are the foreigner, where will you start? Right? You don't just go to work every day. You must be able to find your friends. You must be able to create a life for yourself overseas. So, you know, these are the bigger lessons that we try to infuse in GP lessons for them because they are coming to their own as adults and they will need to make their own decisions. Great. Yeah. So uh, some other interesting issues will be 
uh, Straits Times also. But this one also, it came out uh, in Mothership, you know, so those of us who follow all this uh, social media, Facebook. Yeah, so this was a fish tank order in Tampanese, one of the HDB flats. Okay, there was a strong appeal for it to be kept, but then in the end, HDB decided that it wasn't following the rules because mm -hmm. the steps here were common property. So the owner had to dismantle this koi fish tank, even though it took a lot of money to, to build. Mm. Yeah, so you can see that little children really enjoyed it. Okay, so you can see here. So did, uh, even in my GP, class, GP lessons, I also have a discussion with my students. So why is it that, you know, for HDB common property, an owner cannot decorate it? Okay, so what is considered public space and what is considered private space? Mm, okay, so uh, HDB being public housing, so it needs to ensure that there is equality of treatment for all homeowners. So it would be unfair if a homeowner were to be able to have this, or other homeowners cannot do other things. You know, so sometimes JC students will say, like, Mrs. Tan is so unfair, you know, this guy is clearly using his imagination, he's passionate about fish, right? Okay, then we go into bigger issues, you know, so how do you carry out your passion or live your passion in this world or in Singapore? You know, so uh, it's, it gets them thinking, okay? So something like that. Uh, more relatable issue is COVID now. If, we, if you have been to Bishan Park, we now have this robot dog. They piloted this trial just mm -hmm. for two weeks. Mm, okay. So it is uh, okay. It's altogether a smart robot dog, and it not only can get, <laughs> so it will actually broadcast a message. I don't. I'm not showing you that part, but at every like ten minutes interval, it will broadcast a message that please keep a safe distance. But mm -hmm. in addition to that, it can capture all the images and also send information back. Uh, instantaneously as to whether there's overcrowding and what's going on. Okay, so in time to come, uh, are we comfortable with this kind, this kind of robotic surveillance? I think in pandemics, we are willing to accept that there must be some form of active surveillance, but in peace times, would this surveillance be an intrusion of our privacy? Because if I'm just an ordinary jogger, or you know, I'm having a picnic with my family, and then everything is captured. Mm. So, uh, and the students are like, oh, you know, they, they, it's interesting because some of them feel like, no, no, this, this is not acceptable, you know, but then there are some students who feel like, oh, this is great, you know, we know exactly who is where at what time, and then, you know, there is, it deters crime. So, so as GP, we then have a discussion now. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so I, I hope parents through this little bit of sharing that I have will tell you how broad and how wide GP issues are and really there is no model answer or no model essay. Can I go a bit down on, onto the, the, the way we discuss things with our kids? Uh, because I can also hear from you that um, that your kid actually asks ask you some questions and then yes. and the thing that you did as a parent is really much away, but you mm -hmm. want him to share more and also to hear from him more before you answer the questions from a few different perspectives. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So as a parent, uh, I mean, probably because most of us are not trained in asking questions and some of us sometimes because of um, our time, our limited time, or maybe our views, we may go quite head on and straightforward using only one, one direction. So yes. what's some of your tips um, that you can give to us as parents, like how how uh, how do we make a this discussion that's more well uh, rounded? Okay, can yeah. so actually I have come up with uh, three I, three points and they will start with S. Okay, yeah. So as Singaporeans, we love uh, uh, this acronym. Okay, so one is to and now and now before you share because I want to say hi to some of the parents who are online and see whether they got any more questions more any more questions. Yeah. So um, I want to say hi to some parents who are online with us right now, like Priscilla. So if you have any questions with uh for Judge Joey, do feel free to share in the comments so that she can take it uh before 2 p.m. Yeah. So if you like this video, uh do drop us a like if to show that to show us that you are here as well. Yeah. Mm. 
Thanks, yeah, thanks. So actually, uh, just uh, three simple tips. Okay, so three S's. Okay, so first one will be being very supportive. Okay, so I'm just uh, let me just explain first. Okay, the first one is to be very supportive. The S, the second S means to be sensitive, and the third S is to create space. Okay, so supportive, sensitive, and space. I think uh, as we uh, what do I mean by supportive, right? Okay, I think we are parents are, trim, especially Singaporean parents, we are so supportive, especially in coming up with, let's say, monetary resources, okay? Giving our children all the luxuries, the tangible, the physical comforts, okay? But I think supportive here also means that we are we understand that they are facing a lot of struggles and in terms of the, the ideas that they are processing, okay? So if we create time for them to ask questions, um, let's say after watching the Mulan movie and then some girls say that, I, I want to I want to I want to fight just like Mulan. You know, I, I want to I want to go to Air Force, I want to go to the army, I want to serve in the navy, you know. You know, then as a parent, how you feel go like, huh? But you're supposed to be a ballerina, you know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, okay. So um so that's the thing. Uh my so don't you should give them a chance to express their views altogether, even though their views may come across as unconventional, but just listen to them. Because the first thing, if they start to share and they say like, oh, um, I'm very inspired by Mulan, I want to join the army. And then if the first response you have is to put them down, like, ah, don't be stupid, <laughs> you know, oh, yes, you're very young, you don't know anything. Or you go like, yeah, armies are for boys, you know, then I will tell you, they will subsequently stop telling you anything, even if they want to talk to you because they don't want to get being, they, they, they don't want to have their views being put down. Yeah, and so I think as GP teachers, what we do is we always foster a very conducive environment where everybody, is, they feel safe to share their views. Because as GP teachers, if we slam the views down straight away, the whole class mm. will not share. Yeah, so number one is to be very supportive. Okay, just listen, okay? So I tell parents, don't, don't, say too much first sometimes just listen okay if a girl says she, after watching Mulan she wants to be a warrior she wants to be a fighter okay then you go like oh you know why okay what's so fun about fighting for you okay just just ask questions okay second thing is to be very sensitive also because sometimes when students are well, when children are thinking about certain issues we, there are more and more gray areas in in our society Okay, so I think, um, for instance, LGBT is an uh, area that is also separating some Singaporeans into being pro-LGBT and some Singaporeans being against LGBT. Mm -hmm. So definitely, and I will tell you that your child will encounter this issue even more strongly in schools. Mm. Yes, okay. And they will, I will tell you, so not later can I ask you, mom, dad, what do you think? Okay, yeah, and then you cannot say like, oh, okay, I don't want to talk about this another day, I'm very busy, go away. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, okay, because I think it's important that we have that channel with them and that um, we, we are sensitive to their concerns. You rather that they talk to you than they go and look for answers on the internet from some random stranger or so. Yeah, okay, and the third S will be to create space. Okay, the space is, this is interesting huh, for parents, space to let them be bored. Sorry, space to let them be what? Sorry. Bored, B-O-R-E-D. Uh, and boredom is important. Mm. Because I think there are there's so many things that are packing into their minds right now, you know, tons of <laughs> Instagram and tons of the, the TikTok videos and everything like that, right? At any point in time, or their friends are texting them, things like that. But actually, I don't know about you, John, but in my childhood days, it was characterized by boredom. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, because last time you didn't have internet. I mean, I grew up without the internet. Yeah, and, um, and because I was boredom, I, I started to think more about things. I started to think about myself, my friends, and my family, and I started to think about what I see. But I realized that when children are traveling or moving around, they're always looking at their phone, and they don't, they don't look. When they travel on the bus or the MRT, they don't look anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. But with boredom, right, you'll be amazed that they can be creative. So what I mean is this, okay, parents, if you can create sufficient boredom in their lives, and you leave books, Okay, mm -hmm. so their parents are like, see, I bought these books for you, you're a naughty boy, you're not reading and wasting my money. Okay, the other way is you create some boredom space, okay, space for them to be bought, right, and you just leave the books there. Mm. In a week or two, they'll start picking up, and then once they pick up a good book, they never stop. So that was a strategy I did for my own children. Yeah. Okay. What, what, what will you say to, to parents uh, who want their children to read, but they don't read? 
Yeah. Okay. So I will. <laughs> okay. It's, it's very good to say like, oh, you know, you don't, you don't read, but then you know, you want to force your children. Then our children will say, oh, you know, you're double standards. You're not reading. Then you force me to read. And then parents will say, I have no time. You know that kind of thing, right? But I tell parents actually, you, you maybe if you can just give the semblance that you're reading. Okay. And and why the book is important. Okay, so that would be useful because actually now you can, there are many places you can read uh, audio summa summaries mm -hmm. of books also. Okay, and I tell my students even when I pick up a book, especially nonfiction, so books like let's say Malcolm Gladwell and all those other writers, I don't necessarily read the entire book as well. I only just read certain chapters that appeal to me at a certain point in time. So I think parents, if you were to do at least some form of selective reading, mm -hmm. even if it's just one chapter, okay, that that, then the, the children can see how ourselves, our minds are growing. Then they will follow likewise because children, they are really great imitators. Yeah, so sometimes uh, I feel that um, if we can model at that bit of behavior, we may not we may not have time to read the entire book, but just uh, that paragraph or that chapter, I think that will be sufficient and then we can engage our children also. Mm. Yeah, and, and, I, and I like the part that, that, that you mentioned that children actually model after the parents and it really brought me back to the times when I realized that I need to read and that was when I was 18 years old yeah and now I, mean, I think about it actually I model after my, my mom um, what she did is she did not force me to read but I can see her with a book every day yeah so I got curious and I asked her what she, she's reading and she passed me a book and said go and read now nah. go and find by herself so but she also told she also told me some of the stories which which got me interested and that's how I got to it. So I thought yeah. there's 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 something I can share uh, with the parents. Yeah. And then sometimes it doesn't have to be like serious books. Like I read a lot of comics. Ah, <laughs> yeah, so actually different genre would be fine. And then, you know, just uh, some years back, I managed to find the Lao Fu Tzu comics, you know. Oh, and, wow. <laughs> yeah, you know. So I show my children and then, you know, we're all reading together. You know, so I mean, so, so we can vary the things that we read. It doesn't always have to be like encyclopedia books, you know, that are so boring, mundane. Yeah, so that's my suggestion also. Mm. Hmm. Okay, and I realized that we spent the past 45 minutes talking about G, uh, how to dwell uh, for GP in JSC. Mm. Uh, and I realized, and I go back to the topic, I realized that uh, there's this part, which is the appository essays. Correct. Is, is, yeah. So uh, let me just do a quick shout out to parents who are still with us. Uh, to, now we have teacher Joey, who had 16 years of experience doing GP. And I think that probably that one is a bit too far for most primary school parents to see. Yeah, but I think right now we can talk about something that is closer, that is in cell one to cell four. Yeah, so if you have any question, please do feel free to drop a question in the comment box and then I can post it to, to, to Joey. Yeah, so could you share with us a bit more on what does a uh, appository essay mean and how, what are some of the fast and quick tips that parents can, can uh, take away? Ah, okay, so I think expository essays for lower secondary, they will just have, they have to write on a on something to, that they can observe, let's say in the world today, it could be about, let's say, uh, gender roles, like women should stay at home or, you know, and men should go out to work. So this is this is like a simpler version of GP now, okay? So they will ask you, what do you think? So they have to give uh, arguments supporting why they should stay at home and why they should go out to work. So every essay, you must be able to surface opposing viewpoints. So as parents, I think what we can do is, uh, like apart from having that conversations with them, I think a lot of students struggle with vocabulary as well. Okay, mm -hmm. because if they are very used to writing uh, those um, descriptive narrative essays where they talk about, you know, the the storyline, the plot, you know, where there was a thief and then the thief went away and all that kind of stuff, you know, mm -hmm. the 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 writing style is entirely different. So I there are many websites that students can actually go to. So like for instance, this one. Okay, I think. Uh, so I just randomly Google stuff. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I think parents can also Google. So the the words that you are using will be very different. Okay. So how do they write the essays? They will need the intro and the conclusion and the body paragraphs. So it will it will look something like this definitely. But of course we have more tips and more ideas for students. But in general, they would be. Use, it would be useful for parents to show them like, okay, these are the words that says, um, these arguments we have presented would prove or indicate this, or all of these points to the conclusion that that, okay. Yeah, so it's very different from writing a story where you are focusing on characterization and plot. 
Yeah, so there are many websites that I feel that students can go into and then also expressing their personal opinion that it is my contention that I think women should go to work rather than stay at home. You know, something along those lines. Yeah, so this is uh, one strategy. And then I think for parents also, uh, Though those of you who subscribe to the Straits Times, okay, these are parents who subscribe to the Straits Times and who bother to read the Straits Times. I will tell you, don't force your children to pick up the newspapers because it's very alien to them. The, the idea of holding up the newspapers, they'll be like, e, it's so heavy, so hard to read. You know, they have yeah. a lot of complaints. Okay, I can tell you that. So what I do is I cut out the articles. Okay, I cut the articles which are useful and then I will put them in a folder. And when the kids are ready, they will read. Yeah, but if you leave one whole stack there and say, wow, you see, the whole the, there's so many newspapers, they're not going to read it. Yeah, this is what happened to me. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so actually on a given day, there could be only one article that's interesting for them, then you just cut it out and then you just put a file. Okay, rather than consistently nag and nag at your kids and then they, they feel very irritated. When they think of reading, they feel this sense of irritation. I don't, I think we want to avoid that. Mm. Anyway, once the article is out, you can throw away the rest of the newspapers for recycling or ground grooming. Yeah. Mm. And, and, and I got a friend who, who also uh, te teaches his own kids English and what he did, uh, and his kids are like from five or six. So what he did is actually he, he, he subscribed to Straits Times and then he actually printed out the article that ah. he wants to discuss with his kids and then they actually just spend about half an hour to talk about it. Yes. yes, correct. Yeah, so actually children do not, children and teenagers do not re need to read everything in the Straits Times. Sometimes there are just two nice articles and sometimes there are none and sometimes there are five. Okay, so I think that as parents, if you are really reading it for your morning breakfast, right? You know, some parents, they, they read it for their morning breakfast. So what I used to do is I used to like use a highlighter and if this was the one that they would like, I would just highlight the title. Mm -hmm. Then after the morning breakfast, then I'll just cut out. Then, or if you have a helper, you can get a helper to cut out the articles that you highlighted even better. <laughs> right? Because I think most parents would, would read some form of newspapers during breakfast anyway. Yeah. Mm. So that's one suggestion also. Of course, I do recommend parents and students to read other websites like, okay, so for me, uh, BBC. Uh, yeah, so foreign news websites are tremendously important as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so BBC, The Guardian, these are free and they have very credible news sources. Mm. Yeah, in, in, in my years of having uh, supported my parents, uh, and I know that there are some, some parents who don't speak English, mm. yeah, and you know that their kids uh, still have to sit for the GP eventually if they go mm. to the GP, Yeah. So what yes. are some of your tips for such families? Uh, uh, yes, I've also had parents who uh, converse with me in Chinese, you know. Yes, yes. But, I, but I tell you, some of them, even though they say that they don't, really you know read and write english yeah. but in terms of the chinese and how they express their opinions they are very sharp okay yeah. because they read widely back in the chinese newspaper so i see the, the same issues the same issues are presented in the chinese papers as well as in the english papers okay so the whole thing is i say continue to have conversations with your children even if it's in chinese right yeah uh, and then ex expand their thinking. Why is it that certain issues are so dramatic? Why is it that uh, George Floyd's death was uh, such a pivotal you know, um, case in terms of the Black Lives Movement? Okay, so, so just converse with them. Okay, because I, I want the idea that children are confident about current affairs. Mm. Mm. If you can instill confidence in them, uh, by the time they reach the JC level, uh, you know, they are ready. No, they don't have all these obstacles, mental blocks. So it sounds to me that uh, it's not much on what to read, though it is important as well. Um, but I think it is the process of really to together and having to analyze it together and then to discuss the, yes. without being judgmental. Yes, <laughs> correct. Yeah. It's very so, important. Yeah, we, we don't we don't shut them down. There's definitely, yes. Yeah. And also um Sometimes also I, I get students in the in secondary school, some parents are also very anxious. They say, is there some model essay that my child can memorize? So yeah, one wrong so. <laughs> Actually, I think in secondary school, I please don't force your child to memorize because you're you're sending a signal that you can't write your own essays. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I think so. What what I take the strategy with for secondary school and for JC is there are beautiful essays written by students because they've thought through it, they spend the efforts. Can you now unpack the strategies that they use behind the model essay? So my think my my idea is we want to learn the strategies, but we don't want to mimic another person's mouth, another person's views. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that will be a better for a learner than just make him memorize twenty five essays. Okay, because their, their self-esteem can be very low because they say, I can memorize, but I cannot write. Mm. So I think it's a bit of a tragedy when that happens also. Mm. So rather work through, get your kid to work through this. Behind this paragraph, what is the reasoning? What are the beautiful words and phrases that the student has used, right? Yeah, and how did a student transit from this idea to another idea? So you, you know, it's like you, you squeeze out all the essence. Mm. Mm. After that, you can move on and you can use those essence for yourself. Yeah, rather than memorizing. So I, I honestly don't believe in memorizing. Mm. Yeah. Because the students, when they memorize the essays, and then if a slightly different question come out, they actually panic. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And and as, as a sharing, uh, it, it reminded me of some of my friends during the JAC times, and they did very well for, for, for GP and scoring like the higher tier marks. Yeah. So what are some of your tips uh, for kids who wants to really score very well yes. and also to have a good uh, or even a, to have written a great essay mm. yes okay so uh, a lot of my students are so for getting for them getting a is is what they really want okay yeah and what i push them is you must try the difficult topics Okay, because for GP, there's a range of (laughs) topics, right? So if you keep doing the easy questions, uh, uh, you don't get out of your comfort zone. I think Mm -hmm. that you may not be able to score A. So Mm -hmm. we push them to try more difficult topics and articulating their views in in a more sophisticated way. Okay, so we do that for them. And then what we also do is we want to push them to write write from different perspectives also. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important. Could you share with us like what are the different perspectives? Uh, yes, yes. Because all I know is like good and bad. <laughs> yeah, so it's like good and bad, yes or no, pros and cons, right? Yeah, but sometimes, for instance, when we talk about issues like poverty, you can say it's easy to solve poverty because you want to give people money, you give poor people money, right? Then after that, poverty is resolved. But actually, um, so there are many books now, many psychologists and who have investigated into poverty issues, both locally as well as in very poor nations, that we realize that uh, some people are poor, it's not because they don't have the money, it's because they face a lot of, let's say, structural uh, discrimination in society, you Mm -hmm. know. So they want to apply for a job, but they don't really have the skill sets, you know, and things like that. So sometimes just giving money may not be the easy way to solve poverty because there are so many structural uh, hindrances in in society itself. So our economic structure is so huge and so complex, you know, so without education, so without um, certain level of technology, it's very hard for a person to really rise up. Okay, especially if you come from a very complicated family background, Mm. you know. Yes. So sometimes we get students to put yourselves in the shoes of some of the families. And so, so like I go through this, uh, the book with them by Tio Yo Yen. This is what inequality looks like, you mm-hmm. know, and then they go like, oh, it is true, you know. Yeah. So putting, so uh, um, a essay that covers different perspectives on poverty rather than just the government must give money, the mm-hmm. government must provide for this. Uh, yeah, that would be a very simplistic essay. Am I going to say that uh, it's actually a uh, mal- Multi-faceted, yes. Question and also, in because it's also a, a reflection of the students' ma- maturity of thought. Maturity, yes, definitely, oh, yes. Really, a high quality. Product. Yes, so actually, yeah, you're, you're right. <laughs> That's why they face so many things. Okay, in it, and I will tell you this: the language is also much harder than the O mm. levels. So the difficulty in terms of the vocabulary and the structure of the sentences, the students are like, you know, I can read and I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so at JC level, so the Straits Times is considered too easy. So uh, I push them to articles from The Economist, New York Times. I, yeah, so I even subscribe to Foreign Affairs and other journals. Then I'll give them such writing. Then they say, oh, okay, I understand now. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, it's, it's one, one tough work for the students and the teachers. Yes. <laughs> to the midpoint where both can achieve benefits and yes, so correct. a good essay. That's why for us, when we see the students flourish, right, it, the sense of accomplishment is tremendous. 
Yeah. yeah. And the best thing they tell you is that they would come back to me at the same time. I think that GP was the best subject, even though it's like the most painful subject. Yep. Because they feel that it, it will prepare them for life. Yes. That's what I want to say as well. Yes. Hmm. Great, great. All right. So, okay. I think we have come to almost the, the, the end of the sharing and there's so much to learn. And now I know why I, why I didn't do well for my GP. <laughs> After, uh, I think oh, about 20 plus years. <laughs> <laughs> well, join your three daughters. Mm. <laughs> oh my God, then I'll look for you, yeah. <laughs> okay, so what, yeah. What, what would be one key takeaway for the parents here? Because I think that you've taught so much stuff and actually it can be quite com complicated for the parents. Mm. Um, in a sense, to, to, to listen, to understand and to execute them. Well, I think it's been a lot of work. Yes. Uh, Okay, so uh, just to my key takeaway with my three S's, the first one will be, <laughs> yeah, so to be very supportive, uh, mm -hmm. because this generation is very different yeah. from what we went through already. Okay, so be very supportive of them. Number two, also be very sensitive when they are airing, sharing you some of their views that you may not agree with. Okay, so don't shut them down straight away. Don't, don't scold them, don't insult them, don't put, you know, don't say mean things. And, and, and more importantly for parents, don't run away. Yeah, because you may not get a chance to talk to the, your child again for the same issue. And then the last one is to create sufficient space. So the three S will be to be supportive, to be sensitive, and space. And the space to be sufficiently bored such that they will, on their own, want to read. Yeah. So maybe not to, to send, not to, to create so many things for them in the day. Yeah. You know, especially now, the holidays, <laughs> the whole stretch. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, plus, yeah. plus you can't tra travel over. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, without, if you just say, give your gadgets a rest, mm -hmm. you know, your phones and your iPads, there are so many things you can do. Yeah. yeah, you know, so we don't always have to turn to the gadgets as a default. Mm. So, I mean, I hope I'm just sharing some of the, the some of my heartfelt thoughts as a parent and also as a teacher from about 16 years, and I deal with teenagers in particular. And actually, a lot of the things that they share with me, the stories that they share about their, they, a lot of them share with me about their stories about how they know their parents and all. And then there's this sense that I will tell you this, you, you may not you may not visualize this, but a lot of them want to connect with their parents. Yeah. But they feel that over the years, their parents have stopped connecting with them. <sighs> okay. I don't know whether as a parent you understand this, but actually when teenagers feed back to me, and then yeah. I, I feel this sense of sorrow as well. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I think in as much as a lot of people say, oh, you know, give our teenagers a lot of freedom, you mm -hmm. know, I think that they, they are still essentially, they still want to come back to you mm. and connect with you. Yeah. So don't be like an ATM machine to them. Mm. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is very true because, uh, I mean, this is also why we set up the, the Facebook group to, to really to help parents and support them, uh, especially those who teach their children. Because I think... Yeah. Like for 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 for, for as example, we and we teach maths and it's e it's easy for us. But if I need to teach GP, I mm. can't and my three girls will fail. Uh, I'll send them to 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 Joey. Yeah, <laughs> but 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 I think that uh, parents may need to know that when we support the kids, it comes at different levels. Uh, mm. one is to teach, which most of us can't. But to be there for the kids and to talk to them and to engage them, that's very important. And it can be done across all subjects. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So the so the really the, the acid test is this when your kid is 18, 19, 20, 21, you know, do, will you still have that intimacy? Will you still have that trust and the faith, you know, in your kid? And your kid also has that trust and the faith in you. Yeah. So I think we as parents, we work towards having a long-term view of parenting. Okay, and, and not stress our kids out just for that particular exam or that particular, you know, that sometimes relationships can get so, uh, so fragile, especially mm -hmm. exam season, you know, I, I've right. also heard stories of parents, you know, shouting at their kid at the end and saying, you know, you're stupid, why you cannot do this, yep. you know, so we refrain from any of these, if, yeah, sorry, I just. No, 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 no. I, I, think, um, I think because I think we, 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 we share similar parenting values and that's mm -hmm. why I talk about parenting now. We can talk non-stop. Talk, talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, not, right, not. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can really sense, sense that even though this is my first time that I met you online, yeah, but I can sense that we do share similar parenting values also. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, um, okay. I think the one we can meet up and then can yeah, okay, have coffee. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so near. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so back to this Zoom uh sharing. Okay, so I think uh it's two oh one and we know that the parents they may want to continue to hear from us uh, and they're going to rush back to the office. So let's quickly wrap up. Okay. So uh I still have one last question for all our guests. Lah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Can I ask you that question? Yeah. Yeah, just uh, I feel stressed now, I want to stress you. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Um as as we know that our our children are uh, and when it, uh 12, 12 year old they have to sit for that very stressful PSLE. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's a very big milestone for the kids. Yeah. So if I may invite uh Joey uh to walk down the mem the memory lane, yeah, down to your younger self, and then you bump into 12 year old Joey. She's so close to you that you can see her and she's looking at you right into the eyes. You can almost touch her there. Yeah. So what will the older Joey tell the younger self? No wrong or right. Anything? Yes. Okay, that's a that's a very good question. I never thought of that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So actually, I I would tell my younger self that um to take more risk back then. So to take what? Take more risk. Take more risk. Ah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So back then, I think my worldview was like very narrow, and you know, I just thought if I do all these things, I'll I'll tick the right boxes in life, you know, mm. and in my exams and everything, right? Because mm. yeah, because my you know back then people only have one idea; they just want to get to a good school, but why what's beyond a good school i don't know but just get in a good school first right mm -hmm. yeah as though if you get into a good school you are made for life but we know that it's not true now now there are so many pathways and people so actually what i would have wanted to tell myself is back then take more time to discover where i want to go in life what are my strengths okay mm -hmm. yeah because and to if possible to find ways to enjoy life a bit more because i remember <laughs> myself as a 12 year old i was just a complete mugger oh yeah yeah, yeah, so <laughs> yeah, so that was my life back then. Okay, let, let me push a bit. So what will you mm. tell the tell your 12 year old uh, about PSLE? Oh my 12 year old about PSLE? Yeah, what what oh okay, yeah. So what, my, what my youngest you, What sorry, what will you tell the 12 year old Joey about oh, yeah. PSLE when you PSLE. met her? Okay, so I think what what if I were to tell specifically about the PSLE <laughs> itself, right? Okay, I'll tell the PS that the PSLE altogether, right, is um, it is a testing for you to become stronger. Wow. Okay, so this is not, it's not a testing for you to become smarter; it's a testing for you to become stronger. Okay, so the exam should be something that for you, at the end of it all, you have learned to find your inner strength and to propel yourself forward. Mm -hmm. Because I think this is what examination should be for. We we want to prepare our students for a bigger at the next stage, not so much for them to get the certificate and just be and crumble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so to yes, so it's not to become smarter, but to become stronger in life. Great. I, I hope this will suffice. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Pass. Now I can give you your A star. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one last question. So if the parents uh, wants to connect with you, uh, how can I do that? Oh, okay. I have a website and an Instagram page. I think my Facebook page is not really working so well. Uh, I can be found at Apricity Academy. So Where's it's how you spell uh, it? Apricity A P R A P R I A P R I C I T Y C I T Y. C I T Y. Yes, Apricity Academy. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, actually, so Apricity is, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. no Apricity is a very old word that says the warmth of the sun on a cold day. Oh my gosh, your English is so powerful. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so when I found the word, I thought it just resonated so much with me and how I really want my students to feel the warmth of the sun when they encounter a very cold and demanding subject like GP. Okay. Yeah, so it's a pretty as an A-P-R-I-C-I-T-Y yes. Academy. Yeah, so I have a website, which is .com as well as my Instagram page as well. Sure. The parents, yes. uh, if you are watching this right now, uh, okay, a uh, disclaimer, I don't get anything out of it. This is not a paid ad. Because mm -hmm. I think I really like what Joey is doing. And I really um, feel inspired by her. Yeah, because I didn't do very well for my GP. La. So whenever I hear someone who can explain GP in such a simple term, uh, I think you can look for her la, if you want to, to talk to her or ask her some questions about GP or English, okay? Mm -hmm. So you can go to a pre city academy. Yes. Already? Yes, correct. Pre city academy. Yes. Okay. Wow. Thank you. Oh, no, yeah. No. Yeah, I just want to use our platform. I mean, to really to reach out to teachers who, I believe, 
teach from the heart because I think I saw mm. on the site something from the heart, right? Yes, yeah. Teaching yeah. from the heart, yeah. Okay, okay. Great. <laughs> I come to the end now. So parents, if you want to talk to Joey, okay, don't ask me. I can ask me about maths, uh, but if you talk about English, uh, sorry, I can't help you. And maybe we'll fail some more. <laughs> talk to Joey. Yeah, I have pasted the link in the comment box. So just get in touch with her. Mm. Yeah, I can feel that you are very passionate teacher. Just <laughs> no joke, man. No joke. <laughs> right. Yeah. But uh, just a shout out, I think that it's a very great school with a lot of opportunities for our students, definitely. Yes. yes of course. Mm. Yeah. Okay, great. I think we have to end here because the parents may want to go back to work already. Okay. Okay, yeah, thank you, parents. Watching Facebook Live while while, while doing work. <laughs> okay. So okay. Uh, parents, we'll see you around. Yeah. Take care. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Peace, yeah.